Hey, so welcome back to Angling 360 YouTube channel. Finally, the flaky rods are away. <laughs> Got to admit, I'm not overly disappointed. <laughs> However, we're back at my kind of fishing. Bite alarms, comfy chairs, recliners, bivvies up, feet up. Just absolute heaven. However, specimen carp fishing ain't our gig. I'm not a fan of these big monster carp. They just don't look, they're not my cup of tea, but what I do like is the place we're at today, Broom Fisheries down in Annan. We've got carp, <coughs> excuse me, from about a few pounds up to between oh, 15 and 20 pounds. High, high double figures, eh, yeah. I think they're kind of PBs are kind of low doubles. But what I do enjoy is the fight, the enjoyment factor of this type of fishing. Because I was very surprised when you first took me <laughs> down here. How bloody well a carp can fight. They are... On the right gear. On the right, on gear. The right gear. You use the word dogged quite a lot. Aye. It's head down. Aye, and it's unbelievable. I, honestly, I was really, really surprised. However, we don't turn up with trolleys and buckets of boilies and magic mixes and magic twigs, as it called. Aye. We don't need all that carry on for what we're doing. Might need it for the for the monster cap, but certainly not for what we're doing. We'll run through the gear. We do have the rods out. We've already we've got it set up. I left it, I left it half five, quarter to six this morning. We got down here for opening time. So we've got twelve hours. But there are steaks. There are steaks today. Not steak and chips, but <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, but it's steaks. Competition time. I do like a bit of competition. Aye. This one he says he doesn't. But he does. Uh, yeah, that's tight, that's <laughs> yeah, we're after carp, commercial carp, on light gear, but in here there are bream, tons and tons of bream, and bream, they are a match angler's best friends, they're easy to catch, well easiest to catch, and you can build a big bag quite easily once you get them fishing, we don't like them very much, <laughs> so, yeah. I will say that bream are wild bream, Aye, they're a diff different they're breed, different. these Commercial bream, honestly, it's like hooking a, a wet sock. bag, and no, it? it's no, just it's... there's no fun in it. I get the whole match thing, <clears> weight and yeah, all that, but yeah, it's a bit building weight. No, for us, this. this is just fun. So, today, if we catch a bream, minus minus one uh -huh. point for every bream that we catch, one point for a carp, any carp, any size, but there is a bonus three points for the biggest right. throughout the whole day. So, we'll keep a running tally on that and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> This competition did spawn about three years ago. Alex, Alex claims he, he doesn't like coming here, but he's always got a smile on his face when he's hooked into a cap. And it was just to add a bit of spice to the day, because I think it was a cold, wet March morning, wasn't it? And we come up with this wee competition, so I've won it three times. I've won it three times. <laughs> he's yet to win it. <laughs> we guaranteed the one today, though, you see. Now that it matters, now that it matters. Man, well, we keep yeah. struggling. Like I know we've got, the, we've got rods. rods out. So yeah, let's let's get get going. See how we end up. Are the best. We're the best lazy car fangle I've run. Hello, bring it on. <laughs> Alex like strikes first. Didn't take long. Pressure's on though. I've yet to win one of these competitions. I think this is a carp. I've not seen it yet, but I think it is. Going with the run, I heard. Look at that, a barbel. <laughs> First drop in. Those are little line bites then. One cap rats, right? Well, the first fish is us. Straight away, four points, isn't it? It's the biggest as well. I will. <laughs> I don't think it's huge. That's the thing with these kind of small commercial fish. They're not, they're not big. But they're great fun on light gear, but it has to be light gear. Landing their own fish then because it's a competition. Oh, aye, oh, aye. oh shit. Aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is that close in, under the tree? Right in under the tree, yeah. Secret spot. What did the fish go up to in here? 20 pounds max. I think the biggest I've heard from, the biggest I've heard, about 19. Or from this from, puddle yeah, we're in? Yeah, yeah, from, from there, yeah. Which, my biggest was about 14, wasn't it? Ah, 14. Was it 14? I think it was. I don't think you were there, but... Ah, right, okay. Uh, I'll need to check the records. I think mine's about 12. From this from, puddle? From this puddle. I mean that up. Oh, gaff, gaff! <laughs> Have a look at him here. Get him back, he's there. Perfectly the bottom. Bottom lip, that's what you want. Barbara suit comes out, no ball up. Is that four points to Alex then? Yes, it does. <laughs> Let's get him. One point for a cap, three for the biggest. And there we go. Right, let's hope there's plenty more where that came from. He is renowned for taking the lead in these competitions, but. And then getting goosed at the end. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, fish number two, carp number two more importantly. So only we, but they all count, nice little common this time. <coughs> Again, just under that tree, nice and tight. Whoa, watch that tree. I got it there. <laughs> that could be dangerous. This fish is about two pounds. <laughs> it is great fun on light gear. Oh, he's about three pounds. And he's in the net. Fish number two. I much prefer the commons to the mirrors. They're just lovely looking fish. Fully scaled. Lovely looking little fish. <laughs> I think let's see back. Let's get him in the water. Nil. Five points to nil. Always happens, but. <laughs> so. so, commercial, commercial carp fishing. Not something we do a huge amount of time. Spend a huge amount of time doing. Uh, it's good fun. It's good fun. I'm keeping it really simple. Uh, if I was a match angler, I'd have all the gear. I'd be set up and I'd be looking to bag up on carp. We're not. We're here for hoping for a couple of fish, preferably down the edge. Uh, it's much more exciting when you get those little line bites and then the rod just wraps round. Uh, but if we need to go out at range, we can do so. Starting off with simple twelve mil. Robin Red Pellet on a quick stop guru link. I think that's a size 8. Marvellous. And it's a method feeder, flatbed method feeder, 45 grams. And you can get moulds that give you a perfectly round little bundle of bait, but I don't really get much time for that, so I'll need to do it with my seconds. I not really set myself up properly here. There. I'll go through the ground bait in a second, but that just pretty much gets squashed on there. Hook bait. Squashed on top. It's not going to work now. I need to put a wee bit more water in this. I am just dropping it down the side just now, so I don't need to cast it any distance, so it doesn't have to be perfectly, perfectly round. That's 
general idea, a little bundle of bait, hook bait just sitting on top of it. Carp comes along, soaks the whole lot up, and the rod goes over. Simple, a little bit messy, but it's effective. I'm just starting to nod up there. Oh, you need a net. <laughs> Is that your distance rod? No, I changed because, like you, I noticed twirls quite close in. So I brought it close in. How can you enjoy this? I don't want to say this is a nice fish because he's always made you look like an idiot. It's tiny. Yes. Come back, son. So that was on the three pink wafter. On the, the hybrid feeder on it. There we go. Get him back straight away. What do you think? That's bigger than Alex's. <laughs> Hey, come back, son. It was a weird, weird day. I was literally standing looking at my rod and it just slowly went round and then shot off in the middle of the lake. Head shakes. But I'm right in saying the bigger ones are more slower in their movement than the, the kind of skittery smaller ones. I'm bigging this up, it'll be tiny. I'm just about. I know, it's shot out for him. Close in seems to be the... Oh, I think it freaks me out. Is the barbell foot. You keep that bend in the road. Wait, come on. Pink wafter again. I think if Alex is honest, that might just be bigger than his. What you good? Right, we'll get the, the points added up, but more importantly, we'll get them back. Nice week, Colin. 
Man da we. If my calculation are correct, I think that shoots me into the lead with Alex having the bream. Go and check. They don't count if you lose them before they're in the net. That's very bream like. Get away with one there, Alex. Mm -hmm. You get away with one there. <laughs> well, I'm slightly, probably, arguably a bit more simpler than what Alex is in terms of the, the bait. I use this. Push pellets, fishery pellets, three mil, soak them in water when they arrived. Keep them nice and moist in there. Fill the feeder up. So I said, I don't know what I've actually forgot to do here is. So these are bandy took links. I think that's a size size eight, is it maybe? So this wee tool helps spread the band like so. If you've big daft fingers like me, just helps the process. These pink lafters. So what happens here is, for those of you who don't know, that spreads the band as I say. That pops over the pellet, hold the band, slide it out. Bob's your uncle, Jesse's your auntie. That then, just press that down into there. Now I like to just cover it a wee bit with a few more pellets. And don't be feared to press this down. Anybody that watched Guru's Underwater series will know that you can't press this down too hard. Now here's the difference. Spicy sauce. There's probably a lot of other brands that do the a similar sauce, but this is the one for me. Like a wee bit of strawberry syrup and tap your ice cream. And that's that's why I'm in the lead. Seems to be the further out for the edge that we've been putting these baits, the bream are turning up. However, if you get that tight your rod tip, bail arm off, and then literally right under that bush, that sounds like a bream bite. <sighs> See if this is a daft bream. That is as well, isn't it? Oh, for France sake, look. Look at the neck of that. No effort in it whatsoever. I'm sure you'll... Yeah, it's just... That's just outdone all my good work in that cart, sir. Look at the neck of that, look. I'm just I'm not a fan. Let's get them back. No, I'll leave it there. That was a distance rod right enough. Right, bringing them back closer in. I think the bream are following me. Look how in that was. I've literally just put that rod back out and I'll again. Really. So bream carp, bream back to a carp again. I feel a bit heavier. 
He said that for every single fish. I know, I know, I know. But that's a, a compliment to the fish and how well they actually fight. Honestly, there's nobody more surprised how well these cat fight. Oh, is that the barbel? That looked all feel long. I bet I'm coming on it. Take my times with this one. Pink wafters are the way to go. Pinched a few. No, no. <laughs> I threw a lot heavier. Like a big mirror. Now remember, this is the monster cat, right? Now this is monster cat for me. There are a couple of nice big commons in here that we've had over the years, however. This doesn't look like a bad mirror at all. This has to be a double. Eh? It's probably not a double, to be fair. Shit. Ah, oh, come on. Hey. Oh. Hey, come on, big boy. Straight in the net. Just fit in the net no more. <laughs> That's definitely the biggest. Me arguing with that. Well, if there was any doubt in the last comment there about who's the biggest, there is no doubt now. That's lovely. Please behave. Mirror. And away. That's me thermal in the lead now, isn't it? <laughs> Is that the second beam you've lost? You shouldn't be taking some amount of time to give me a Big shout that you've got a beam on. Big skill. I lose as many fish as I do. <laughs> that, was a, that was some size, that beam. That was a, <laughs> that's a proper slam. So what's your scores so far, Alex? I've lost count. I'm on one. I went from five points to one very quickly. I think Gordon's on six or something like that. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. <laughs> Update for the bivvy. So Alex took an early lead. But the bream that he caught, and he has lost two in her bream, which would have been ideal. And me catching a couple of bigger carp, it's actually swung round to 5-1 in my favour. Alex is having some technical difficulties at the moment. Having to reset his rod up. Now we are allowed two rods each. Alex has opted for one rod at the moment with the option of his second rod being set up for the float. Which later on I might do the same myself. However, 
I've got my two rods out on the, the method feeders. I want to get the points in the, on, the, on the scoreboard early. So we're at the halfway point. Never know. I thought I cut it off to the halfway point. But it's five on me. <laughs> That's caught. I should lost your only point, mate. Neil Poir. Sorry, don't like this place anyway. <laughs> now that's slow. Started off alright. Bream have moved into my nearby tree spot. I've seen a, f a few fish moving across this far side, right in tight to a tree. <laughs> I tried it earlier on today and ended up in the tree, but uh, let's see if we can get it clipped up. A couple of practice goes, hopefully get right in tight. And it can get a wee bit tighter, I think. So I chucked out there and it fell just a little bit short, so I've unclipped, taken off another yard of line. Put it back in the line clip. I'll give it one more shot. Hopefully I shall put me right in under that tree. There we go. That's what we want it. All right, this is the one that counts. <laughs> Practice shots out the window. Right and tight. So as we touched on earlier on about the, the monster cap, as you'll probably notice, this rod I'm using, if you've watched any of our other playlists, for example, the Roach playlist, it's the same rod. Um, don't have a multitude of rods for roach and carp fishing, but this one is the the specimen dual tip end gauge rod from Guru. Uh, I th I love this rod. It's probably one of my favourite rods. So versatile. Uh, I've got a number of species on this rod, from barbel, carp, roach, bream, uh, to name a few. Uh, that's paired up with the uh, the Guru Aventus four thousand reel. With, I think that spool's got ten pound drag line on it, all the way through, onto the feeders that we showed you earlier. So I nothing. There's no three and a half pound test card rods, three pound test card rods. We have We don't. We don't need them here. As Alex said earlier, lighter the better. And as you saw the fight, you get off these carp with these lighter rods is top notch. I think I absolutely love it. It's great sitting having a wee snooze, and that's why. I use these big alarms. The fishery does allow them as long as they're in on the low setting, uh, so you're not doing everybody's nothing. Turn them off when you're setting yourself up, turn them back on. There's nothing worse than every two minutes. You. So I have the rods on the alarms. I like a snooze, as I've said before. Plus, if I'm over filming Alex, if he's got a fish, it helps us hear the runs. If they, obviously if they weren't on the alarms we wouldn't hear the range you're having to rely on super hearing to hear the drag but I, a simple enough setup and that I've used as I say on many many different locations for many different species and it, it works for me so I hope that satisfies the tackle tarts amongst us Do you ever have one of those days where just nothing goes to plan, nothing works anything you touch breaks I usually pride myself on how accurate my casting is. I had struggle to land this on a, I don't know, struggle to hit a tennis court right now. I've been in that tree three times. Right, that one over there. A couple of liners there. So to be on the safe side, I'm staying away from that far bank. <laughs> and I'm back down the side under this tree. Uh, Gordon explained a little bit about his setup. I'm sure he thinks he's on Monster Cart. Two rods out, bind alarms. Kind of specialist style, it is specialist style, but with much lighter gear and it's a it's a good way to go about it. 
And then it's slightly different, single rod on a quiver tip. Not even with a bait runner, just a tight line. No alarms. Because the best thing I think for me fishing a venue like this is seeing that rod wrap round. And you don't get that on alarm. Yeah, it's great to hear an alarm. But there's just something. Ah, there's just something about it's that rod wiping. wrapping round. Uh, and the fact that you don't have a drag uh, or a bait runner it means that uh, the, the rod just buckles in half. Well, at least I've, well, as far as I remember, that's what happens. Not much going on at the minute. Oh, perfectly. Now, we couldn't have timed that any better. Oh, it's come off. <laughs> that's the first time I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I tore it off there. Ah, damn it, I lost it. Oh. That's what happens. That's that's <laughs> what it's all about. I should not like off, but hey. Bye. That's my setup. That's my story. Things might be looking up. Fingers crossed. Got a long way to go back though. What is it? Six nil down. No, five one. Nah, I'm down nil. I'm down to nothing. Oh. Hmm? Oh, I forgot uh -huh. to take your dream off. Nah, I am down to down to nil pois. So yeah, well five. Five so nil. The dream mix you've got or the same. Well, I while we're here, that's how we look at this. And I think this might be my downfall. Uh, I went slightly different again. To go on, we like to kind of mix up, we like to do different things just to see what happens. And I've went very much more ground bait orientated. There's a bit of corn in there, there's some three mil pellets, but there's a lot of ground bait. Uh, there's a green lip muscle method mix, and there's a lot of a robin red in there as well. So, yeah, maybe that, that ground bait is that ground bait is, is bringing in a wee bit more bream. However, that was not a bream. So, yeah, let's get it back out. Just after losing that fish, but right back on the spot and tight under the bush. Part of line bites almost instantly. And then bang, we're in. Shit, I've got the net. <laughs> you have the net. <laughs> So yeah, light gear, like you said. What's that green? I think, yeah. You can get in the freezer, <laughs> This rod is a 1.5 pound test curve Taiwa Black Widow dual tip. So I've got the quiver tip section in today. Paired up with a 3,500 sized Taiwa Black Widow bait runner. I think my key bonus points are safe. Yeah, so far. <laughs> oh, I've seen that. It's even displaced the water. Look at that. Ah, look. Big swirl. I mean, this fish is about five pounds. <laughs> it Good fun. Light rod, big, big bow in it, big bend, big elastic band in it. Means you got a wee light gear. <clears throat> Just get his head up, hopefully. That's what I mean by that dogged fight. Just head down and they just beat that big tail and all that. It's a five pound fish. If we were fishing three pound test curve rods, we'd have dragged it in, dragged it in right in the net. No fun. But then at the same time, it's a bit of a balance. You don't want to overplay them. A wee skinny one. Yeah, not a big fish. Pretty lively. Lovely sort of chestnut colour on that. It's a skinny fish <laughs> for a carp. Pretty lean. Well, let's get him. Get him back. Quite lively. There we go. Back up to one point. 
come back. How can you enjoy that? I'm not going to lie, I thought it was a bit bigger than that. Lovely wee mirror. Lovely markings on that one. Get them back. Alex, that's just here that my eighth carp I lost straight back in the same spot because I've been in all day and this is number nine. I've got number nine yet. I must have been number eight if I land that actually. But I don't know, I, I reckon that. What's it coming finally? I reckon that spicy sausage mix has got something to do with it. What happened there, mate? I missed it. Nothing. What? I'm gonna be honest. Caught a fish. Which I suppose is a... A plus. Is a plus. But in this case? Yeah, it was a bream. Not enjoying this. This is shite. <laughs> See, this is the joys of having a competitive nature. <laughs> I'm blaming that. And I'm giving full credit to the spicy sauce. Still the early doors, but. A late comeback? No. <laughs> Not a big is it? No, no, no. The way my day's been going, not, I'll probably lose it in a three.
that P we're going for there. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned around and seen your leg in it. Did you miss that? <laughs> Did you miss that and end up in the tree? What did I tell you? Absolute nightmare of a day I'm having. It's almost like I've never fished before. <laughs> See if anyone's watching this. Both of the wrong me. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about like... Alright. <laughs> anyone watching around the video? Look at this guy. First time fishing. I'm done. See, what, can't even release a fish properly. <laughs> so Alex, the minus one point for a bream invitational is in its fourth year. Talk us through how it's been going so far. I'm doing this just now because you know as well as I do, this place comes alive for the last few hours before light. How would you sum up your day? Not fit for broadcast. How did it start off? Oh, it started off great. You have nothing to say. <laughs> I have an absolute shocker. Nothing to do with the fishery. Nothing to do with the fish. Just me. But hey, we all have days like this. Just gotta embrace it. I hope it doesn't last too long. Where do you feel you've went wrong? I don't know. Lazy. I've been lazy. I've really I've not worked very hard. I've stuck with one spot for most of the day, even through the quiet spells. Whereas normally I would be trying different approaches, different baits, different areas. Aye. It's commercial carp, not that fast. Look at the state of that face. <laughs> I love it. Right, you've given me the Spanish Inquisition. What's your story? Well, first thing I saw, I was worried. You shot off into a nice five point lead. But I remembered at the time that there was only three extra points because the fact that I hadn't caught anything. So you straight away had the biggest fish. So with that in mind, I used my wealth of knowledge from this place. And unlike yourself, I stuck through two rod format. I know you're hanging off for the float rod for a late comeback. I think I'm maybe just out of reach, but I did start with one close, one far, because that's worked in the past. But the one at distance was bringing a bream in. I think I've only had two bream. I'll have to check the score sheets. But I've <laughs> it's funny because Alex says he's stuck to the one spot and he feels he's been lazy. I've stuck to the one spot. But even if I had used one rod, it's my left hand rod under the tree that's produced eight of my nine carp, no bream. The other rod, one carp, one bream. So even if we take that rod out of the equation, it's produced no points for me before Alex starts to go down that road. Now he is banking on, I think, He's banking on his, his float skills. What he likes to do is manoeuvre around the pegs when everybody's away. Drops his sweet, sweet corn and try and winkle a few out. But to be fair, if he does get one bigger than between 11 and 12 pound, that changes it. It happened a couple of years ago. So we're heading into the last two, three hours, two and a half hours, that's how the light goes. It could easily all change. It really could. It's happened before. I believe the last the last time we done this, it was literally the last countdown, ten seconds, bang, I got a fish and won it. So all's to play for. That it's been good fun. Definitely think the sausage, spicy sausage syrup has made the difference. Because we're fishing right next to each other. Maybe that's just that extra bit of attracting that's made the difference.
That's what I think anyway. I'm sure you will do. Hello. Just come back from a wee chat there. Gordon's. Oh, it's a big common. <laughs> it's a nice big common. Yeah, yeah, I came back there and my line was pointing a completely different direction. <laughs> That's a nice fish. Don't think it's going to take the biggest fish of the day yet. It's going to definitely take the best looking fish of the day, I think. And you know what? I'll take that. That smell back in your face. Is that a common? Hi. Nice common. Not huge, but it's a. Uh, Nice. Maybe get a wee photo of this one as well. Remind me of how lovely a day I've That's had. Is that a mirror? Oh, I don't want it then. <laughs> Is that a mirror? Sure, I've seen. You're having a how well you can I tell the difference between a common and a mirror? Look. That could be a that could be a pike for all I can. A screamer of a oh, oh, Jesus. camera <laughs> I sincerely hope that camera picked up what I saw that was mental <laughs> I honestly thought you were getting in oh, I hope that I hope that showed up great <laughs> oh probably let me explain what happened there. <laughs> Seen some line bites on the rudders. Ah, I'll get a camera and try and get a take here. Uh, yeah, the fish noise took the rod into the water. I actually had to, <laughs> had to leap for it. <laughs> I hope that's as funny as what I saw. <clears throat> <laughs> Caught the rod though. <laughs> Just a bit. The phone alright? Uh, I think so. Uh. <laughs> uh, can I go on that please? Right, I'll go and get it. Get it, I don't know. Small, but very, very cute. The commons are just so much nicer, aren't they? Oh, lovely little fish. Come back on then. Nah. You can see them. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> right, we need to go and view this camera back. <laughs> Look how lucky we We just watched Alex's footage back. Oh, brilliant. It's not as funny as what I saw. But that's why you use alarms. <laughs> this feels like a bit better fish than what we've had recently. Come on.
we got here, Alex? <sighs> Apart from that tree, again. <laughs> well, just as I was getting just into actual positive numbers, I think that's me back to zero. Was it one? I'll double, I've got one, that cancels out your last one, didn't it? Ten points for the acrobatics, but This feels a little different. The few fish I've had today have been a bit sprackly. This one just feels a little slower. No plodding. It's not really doing much, it's just hanging there. Yeah, of interest, this will be interesting to see what this is. <laughs> if I don't lose it, that is. We need a bigger net for this one. Let's not get carried out here. I don't even net though. They feel heavy when you pull in there. It's just slow. It's a better bend than your rod uh, as well. I don't know, this is like, I'll just, go and get the net. It feels different. Anyway, I knew that one felt a wee bit, a wee bit better. Uh, lovely looking fish. This is the carp that I like, all right? Not a fan of the, the mirrors, like I said, but when you get a fish that looks, he can behave himself. Like that. Long, lean. Common carp. Lovely looking fish. I'd say that's close to doubles. Not quite as big as yours, but... Oh, really? Yeah. Would you give me, what do you think? I would say 10. 10? Yeah, let's go 10. Let's go 10, 11. Yours is 11, 12, so... You're still in lead with the biggest, but that is definitely... That's the best. That's the best looking fish. Best looking fish. I'd give you the best looking Let's have a couple of wee photos as well. Definitely fish of the day for me, if not. <laughs> He's not hanging about either. Well, that's a little bit of redemption, I suppose. A little bit. A little bit. Right, it's time for another one, come on. Finally, a couple of fish started to show up in my swim. My peg, my tree, my bush. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm well and truly beaten in this competition. But I fancy, I fancy trying to put a wee cherry on the cake. Uh, I'm going to try and get one on the, the centre pin, float rod and lift method. Just for something a wee bit different. Traditional, traditional reel float rod. A little waggler float. And the lift method, that's the key. Nice way of catching them. So if I can get this one in, I'll switch over to float rod. See if I can... <laughs> we'll make an see that. if I can do something right today. That's one. Oh no, let's... Let's 
There goes that's carp number seven for me. Has Rich let you down? Has let me down? Before Bream. My inability. Incompetence. A few bream, a few bream as well. Bream. Right, let's let's give this float a go. Okay, let's set the cameras up and we'll try and catch it. All. Try and get a bite. And I'll talk you through the lift method as well because it's an interesting, interesting way of fish. Bring on, let's bring a bit of class to the party. So, old school center pin wheel, float rod. This is basically my Grayland setup. So if you watch them in the Grayland videos, this is exactly the same setup. I'm going to try and get a carp on it. But the lift method, if you have a look here, uh, little waggle float, but it's uh, a little bit more buoyant at the base. And you see I've put it on with float stops rather than shot. So there's absolutely no shot around about that float. And then all the way down to four inches from the hook. We've got a couple of triple A shots. Now these shot are too heavy for that float, deliberately too heavy for that float. So what these shot will do is going to anchor that float in place, sitting on the bottom, and the float should just sit either a pinprick above the surface or just below the surface. Now we've got three hair rigged grains of corn, and the idea is the fish sucks up the corn, lifts its head, which then lifts the, the shot off the bottom. That's what I think I just did a day. <laughs> hooks through my finger. Oh, <laughs> and then I rode you off I'm the clock cap just a long lean one you just did. That's about half the size of the long lean one I've just had. Oh, I'm going to have one. <laughs> a lively little so and so. Yeah, fish. Sucks in the bait. Lifts its head, which then lifts the shot off the bottom, and that float lifts in the water. Sometimes it can come right out of the water and lie flat before then sailing away. That's the theory. Judging by the way today's went, we'll try and catch it. Let's see. So I've set this, plumbed this already just to be at the right depth for about this area. So hopefully. There we go. So it's just sitting there, just below the surface. Oh, something on it anyway. Something's a couple of line bites there. Shifted around. <laughs> no, no, I'm all right. Yeah. Well, Australian didn't quite lift. Uh, what I think's happening there uh, is we're fishing on a slope. So if the fish are coming up the slope, soaking in the bait, they're not really lifting their head. They're just maybe coming back down the slope. That's why that float shot away. Uh, but yeah, let's bait up and try again. Let's hope I've not spooked it. Nope, there it goes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely on it. I don't know if that may be bream. Oh. Worked perfectly though, straight out of the water. <laughs> oh, I broke my float. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's how they catch them. <laughs> Let's get a wee shot of this. Bad fish here. Nah. I thought it was bigger. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You have a good account of yourself, anyhow. I think I might be ending on a fish as well. <laughs> We're in a bit of a pickle. Nice wee posing mirror to finish. Alex is battling with a fish there now. I've got a camera on a tripod. Champion. Four times in a row. Let's get him back. Probably be common to finish. Here I'm back. Let's see you later. <laughs> um, oh, I've got my phone. I think was it fourteen. I lost count. Generally, lost count. Fourteen to. I got a, got a wee strong finish. Did, I, got, I got a few at the end there. Nice but, common as well. Uh, I think I finished on nine in total, minus two breams. So that's seven points. Really? I think so, so. 12 plus three. I got one there at the end. 15 7. 15 7. Better Aye. than 10 1. Aye. A poor start. A poor start, but. Well, I did a good start. I had a poor start. I know. I had a good middle <laughs> and kind of end, and then you'd a good end. It just shows you, carp fishing can be fun with a little gear, yeah. light rods, light tackle. Definitely like won't be the most comprehensive, well-rounded, controlled carp fishing you'll ever see. No, no. <laughs> Where's the fun in that? <laughs> I like the day for me was his either. Oh, that was a control, I was controlled. <laughs> no, but no, honestly, I, I, I had a good laugh today, it was, it was good fun. Yeah, well, that's what it's all about. At least one of us did. Doesn't matter who wins or loses. <laughs> <laughs> no, but fair play. That was good. I enjoyed that. Right. You on the chippy then? Aye, let's go chippy. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Whatever that may be. Cheers for watching. See you later.